let me see beauty that made the soul adore you hope of a life spent with you here I am to worship how the here I am to say that you're my God together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worth, all together wonderful to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Welcome back for some of you, really. Uh, it's nice to see your faces. Eventually, we're going to figure out how we're all going to fit in here six feet apart. <laughs> I don't know how. So if you have a suggestion, let me know, but I'm not sure how we're going to do that. But uh, we'll trust in divine providence. Sisters and brothers, as we gather to celebrate this most sacred liturgy, and as we gather to worship our God in word and in sacrament, we call to mind our sins and we ask the Lord for mercy and for forgiveness. I confess. To Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Christ Eleison Kyrie Eleison Glory Glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your whole great glory. Lord oh God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty 
Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory. Glory to God in the highest. Glory. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth be to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to obtain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the union of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. <coughs> Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, it is my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair. When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns away from the wickedness he has committed, he does what is right and just. He shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord.
Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, is there any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy? Complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness, or idle vain glory. <clears throat> Rather humbly, regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be in our lips as you proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you lord jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people what is your opinion a man has two sons he came to the first and said son go out and work in the vineyard today he said in reply i will not but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of these two did the father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes 
are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. A few weeks ago, I stated in a homily, you cannot be normal and be Catholic. And today I'm going to return to that idea. The world wants us to believe that we can be our own persons, separate from everybody, individuals, and completely on our own. To a certain extent, that's true. We don't want to be a financial burden on those around us. And we should be able to live our lives um, in the Christian way, in our own way. But it is not possible to live today and not have associations, to not be connected with those around you. Couples are connected through marriage to their spouses. Children are connected to their parents, to their friends, to their teachers. When we do ministry, we're connected with those we help, to the poor, those in need, to the homeless and the sick. As Catholics, we're connected to the parish, to the diocese, and to the global church. We're all connected also to heaven, to our loved ones who have gone before us, to the saints, the apostles, to Mary, and to Christ. These connections mark us as never being alone, not working for our own sake. And in fact, they forbid us from working out of selfishness or out of vainglory. We continue the mission of those who have gone before us, and we will pass it on to our children. This mission unites us as one church, one people, whether here in the Diocese of Memphis, in Rome, or anywhere else, Catholics have the same mission that Christ had. When one of us fails, the rest of us suffer. But when one succeeds, we all have to celebrate. This makes us different from the rest of the world. It sets us apart from a society that pounces on the failures of others and seeks to destroy rather than build up. This world refuses to acknowledge the ties that bind humanity together and instead uses our differences for its own gain. So how do we work for this mission? How do we bring about this sense of unity among people to show them that we should be helping each other rather than hurting? We do it by living our Christian call. Okay, so what does that look like? There were once two Catholics. One who would go to church every week, was constantly praying, and knew everything there was to know about the faith. But when it came to helping others, he refused. He wouldn't aid anybody he came across. In fact, he'd ignore them. He thought he was better than those around him. And so he would never give money to the poor. He never went and visited the sick or uh, volunteered to help out around the church. The other, oh, or the other never went to church. He was never found in prayer. He didn't know the least bit of information about the faith. Yet, when he was needed, he was always quick to help. 
He was constantly uh, volunteering, constantly giving to the poor and helping those in need. Although neither of these two examples are the ideal for how a Catholic should live, we should be living both by going to church and then going out. The second one is closer to the gospel message. The second one understood what the gospel was actually saying. He understood the unity that should be shared amongst Christians, and he tried to live out the message of Christ. He is also the one who will call the world to conversion, to be that beacon of hope that we all need, to be a martyr for the faith. Although he might never be slain, he gave his life for the church. We are not called to isolation. We're not called to hide behind the doors of the church as if we were a monk or a nun. Don't get me wrong, those are great callings. The religious life is the highest of all vocations. But if we're not called to it, we shouldn't be putting on the habit. Don't hide behind your prayer or behind the doors of the church. Instead, go out and make a difference. That is, after all, the point of the Mass. To strengthen you. To prepare you for spiritual battle. To give you Christ. And then to kick you out and send you out into the world. To fight and to win the war. That is the only way Jesus can reach anybody who is currently not here. And it's the only way we who are currently here are going to remain here. So is it possible to be Catholic and to be normal? Sadly, it is not. The world is just too different from us. And we are called to do more. To be united with the church. To shout forth Christ to everyone we see in everything we do. Only in doing this will we truly be able to be call ourselves Catholic. So do not let your faith stay here. Do not let yourself become like that Catholic who refused to serve. Use the Mass as a time of refreshment and pep preparation. Arm yourself with the Eucharist and then go out and fight the battle and win the war. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten now made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in faith, we offer our prayers to the Father. For our church and parish, that we may become a community of solace, encouragement, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the graces of clarity, 
an active response and discernment of our Heavenly Father's will for all those considering a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children and young people, that they may always possess the joy and wonder of God's great love and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, that Christ will welcome them into the kingdom of, the, of his Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers that we have placed before you. In the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives with you and the Spirit forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for, for through your goodness we have received the bread. We offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine. We offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, O Lord God, and Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. And now, sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Uh, grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it, the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence our countless host of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without end. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father Most Holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You created us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And even through disobedience, we had lost your friendship. You did not abandon us to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered us a covenant, and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father Most Holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin to the poor. He proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so they bring into perfection his work in the world. He might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father Most Holy, having loved his own who, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread he blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death, his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, 
upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant that in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, they gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, O, o Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you and your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Saints Joachim and Anne, and with your apostles and martyrs and all the saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord Jesus Christ, bring your life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The body question.
Let it Christ. Body Christ. The 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 body Christ. Body Christ. The 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 body Christ. Amen. The body Christ. 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 Amen. The body Christ. The body Christ. Body Christ. The body Christ. The body Christ. The body Christ. Body Christ. Body Christ. Body Christ. The 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 body Christ. Body Christ. Body Christ. The 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 body Christ. God bless you. The body Christ.
Right. Tomorrow is Catechetical Sunday, and it's been the custom that uh, because this year, as you know, our PRE program is all online, uh, but the catechists are still teaching uh, uh, their classes, but you know, but it's all online this year. So uh, because it is Sunday, uh, if you're a catechist, uh, stand. Uh, we like to send you fourth. So if, if you're a catechist, please stand. Now, uh, also, I want to add that if you are a parent at home teaching your children, stand because you need it as well. So if you're teaching your children at home, stand as well. Real. <laughs> Who's watching your kids? <laughs> All right. And we pray. Oh, Lord, our God, we ask you to send the power of, of your spirit upon these our catechists as they embark on this new year to teach our children the faith, the faith that your son handed on to his apostles and to us. We ask you that through the intercession of Mary, our mother, and St. Anne, our patroness, that they may truly, truly become disciples and make disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you for your time and energy. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord, be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.